This is Malika Hook from the University of Colorado. Traumatic glaucoma is any form of glaucoma that results directly from injury to the eye. Some causes include blunt trauma with direct damage to the aqueous outflow system, penetrating injuries leading to disruption of tissues with inflammation and scar formation, retinal detachment with subsequent plugging of the trabecular meshwork with blood or inflammatory cells, bleeding with compromise of the outflow system as well as exposure to caustic substances. The elevation in intraocular pressure can occur immediately after trauma, as is the case with bleeding, or decades later, as can be the case with angle recession. The risk of development of glaucoma post blunt trauma has been reported at 3.39% and 2.67% after penetrating injuries. Causes of IOP rise postocular trauma include persistent inflammation, which is often temporary post trauma, but can be chronic with resulting changes to the drainage angle from inflammatory cell deposition and or synechia formation. These changes can lead to lasting elevation in intraocular pressure and development of glaucomatous optic neuropathy. Strict control of inflammation with steroids can decrease the chance of synechial angle closure, but must be closely supervised to avoid steroid-related IOP spikes that can in itself cause glaucomatous optic neuropathy. Extensive synechia formation may necessitate gonia synechialysis once inflammation is controlled to allow for egress of aqueous humor out of the eye. Other surgical procedures may also be necessary depending on the stage and severity of disease. Hyphema is another cause of IOP elevation post-trauma to the eye and requires prompt attention to avoid long-term complications. The initial hyphema often resolves with use of steroid drops along with midriatics like atropine 1%. But resolution depends on the extent of the hyphema. A small layered 1 to 2 millimeter hyphema is initially less concerning, relatively speaking, compared to an 8 ball hyphema that can lead to immediate elevation of IOP and staining of the cornea if longer lasting. However, even small layered hyphemas can be associated with significant IOP spikes and may even require surgical intervention in the near term, depending on the response to therapy, as well as the baseline status of the optic nerve and how resilient it may be in the face of spiking intraocular pressure. IOP lowering medication should be utilized to control pressure, and most classes of topical drops are appropriate, including prostaglandin analogs, beta blockers, alpha agonists, and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Although myotics should be avoided due to possible increased inflammation with compromise of the blood eye barrier, as well as the potential to alter the anatomy of the angle with breaking of clots and exacerbation of traumatic effects on the aqueous humor outflow system. One major concern is when an initial hyphema is resolving, but a rebleed occurs. This occurs in about 5 to 10% of hyphemas with an increased risk of glaucoma. Rebleed often occurs at 3 to 7 days post initial hyphema formation due to clot retraction and lysis. High IOP with hyphema can result in corneal staining, which is both time and IOP dependent. In the case of hyphema with sickle cell disease or sickle cell trait, RBCs may plug the trabecular meshwork, especially in the presence of a low pH environment, and the optic nerve head is at higher risk in these patients. Head of bed elevation, use of patching, steroids, atropine, and aqueous humor suppressants can all be utilized. Avoid carbonic anhydrase inhibitors in patients with sickle cell due to decreasing of the pH as a side effect of this medication, and avoid pilocarpine in all cases of hyphema. AC washout plus or minus filtration surgery may be necessary. I will post instructions on AC washout on keogt.com for further learning. Cholesterolosis post hyphema. This is a relatively rare finding of cholesterol crystals in the anterior chamber of an eye with history of blunt trauma or surgical trauma and hyphema, often extensive and long-lasting and occurring in eyes with poor visual potential. The crystals form due to rise in insoluble cholesterol concentrations within ocular fluids and is not related to the level of cholesterol in the bloodstream. And you can see cholesterolosis in the picture here with the crystals that are scattered throughout the anterior chamber as well as an old layered hyphema with further collection of cholesterol in the inferior part of the anterior chamber. Angle recession and ciliary body cleft may also occur. These two topics are covered in separate lectures that can be seen on keogt.com. Lens subluxation may lead to pupillary block and or peripheral angle closure due to compression of the iris against the cornea. Surgical intervention is needed in these cases with removal of the lens, often combined with vitrectomy.
and implantation of an anterior chamber intraocular lens or suturing an intraocular lens to the sclera or iris using various techniques. Retained foreign body leading to siderosis, as is the case with iron, or chalcosis, as is the case with copper, may lead to toxicity with subsequent compromise of the aqueous humor outflow system. With siderosis, iron may accumulate in the trabecular meshwork causing toxicity and cell death. Chalcosis occurring from copper foreign bodies can lead to severe inflammation and necrosis with widespread ocular damage, including development of glaucoma. Chemical burns, both alkali and acidic, can lead to compromise of the outflow system, and lifetime monitoring of these eyes is necessary to maintain surveillance of IOP and the optic nerve. Alkali exposure tends to cause worse intraocular pathology due to enhanced penetration into the eye, with alkali agents being more lipophilic, compared to acidic exposure, which denature proteins, creating barriers to further damage in the eye. Choroidal hemorrhage may lead to elevation in intraocular pressure, both due to the volume effect of blood accumulating in the eye, as well as disruption of outflow of aqueous humor with shallowing of the anterior chamber and potential synechial closure without intervention to treat the condition. Schwartz syndrome, which is the liberation of photoreceptor outer segments causing elevation of IOP by plugging the trabecular meshwork with increasing intraocular pressure, post-retinal detachment, should also be on the list of potential causes of IOP rise post-trauma. I wanted to leave you with one important thought. Any patient presenting with blunt trauma to the eyes resulting in angle pathology with or without hyphema should be educated about the lifelong increased risk of developing glaucoma and encouraged to keep regular yearly follow-up appointments with an eye care professional. The counseling of patients about this recommendation should be noted in the medical record for future reference. Consider visiting keogt.com for further educational material. This lecture and other educational lectures can be found on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for your time.